I'm glad they invented computers because Dr. Cleary's handwriting is impossible to read. Well, future doc, maybe your practical exam answers are pretty impossible to read, too. Dr. Carpenter sounds like a surfer who found himself in front of a lecture hall and just kind of went with it. Dude. I thought we spoke English. I'm so confused. That's the end of it, I guess. Nothing else on here. My biggest complaint is that there's only one doctor. I'm sorry, I have no twin brothers. The cranial nerve organization doesn't make any sense. It's so difficult. Why? Well, it's really not difficult at all, cranial kid. Um, just think about it as the organization of the New York City subway system. You'll get it, no problem at all. Dr. McKenzie's Australian accent drives me crazy. Dr. Zhang's lecture are great, but he can't just be in the lab all the time. I have my life. Dr. Alcorn sounds like he's commenting on an LSU game. No. Dr. Marshak seems to just point things out on an editor's plate. I found that going back and streaming the lectures once I had studied syllabus on my own was useful, though. Well, you're right. It is much more helpful to go to lecture after you've studied the syllabus. Dr. Cleary's lectures double as a sleep aid, good for the exams and a good night's rest. Does that mean I get paid twice as much? Sonic Hedgehog was the only cool thing I learned in Diesel. Well, every time Dr. Alcorn lectures, I have an insane craving for gumbo. I swear, I'm going to gain 15 pounds this semester. Too late. I think you did. Sometimes I think Dr. Carper just makes up words in lecture, or just says phosphorylate in D. Duh. Thanks, Michael. Now I'm paranoid about everything that I eat. Plus, you ruined legs for me. You suck. Just remember, stick to the three second rule, everything will be fine. Sometimes I wonder if the professors even know what they're supposed to be pinning. Well, at Dirty Scrubs 84, sometimes I wonder if the students know what they're supposed to be identifying. The biochem exams make me question everything about life. How can a human being create such torture? You should try lecturing to them. Pathology is definitely in my future with all those pretty, pretty colors and lovely, pretty cells and pretty tissues. A career in quilt making, I think, for that person. I wonder if Dr. McKenzie knows Sean Connery. Not only did I know him, I had a beer with him. I got requests from the students that they need the haircut. I think they totally didn't know about my hair. First, that is my summer week. I now have a shot, and already uh, I, had, I was in the barber, but let me tell you now. See my uh, ID number. I did this. See my hair. That is my winter wig. Dr. McKenzie should get a, good, get a job at Obamacare IT. He's got to be used to websites crashing by IT. If Dr. Alcoin calls me Ralph one more time, I'm dropping out of med school. You're gone. I was so scared of Mr. Dr. Bick. I heard he never smiled. He doesn't. And that he was sarcastic. He is. But I was so afraid to approach him. All my classmates laughed and joked with him and asked him to play golf and throw darts at the pub, whereas I wore a diaper. And it's hot in the lecture hall. You're too nice. Once again, my response is, I can fix that for this year's class. How long exactly I am teaching in this medical school? I believe too long, but I love it.